an algorithm thing called a dot product, sometimes called a scalar product. I've got these two vectors u and v. So the first one is called x1, y1, the next one x2, y2. The dot product, all we do is we multiply the x values together, multiply the y values together, add them. That is our dot product. So we're not multiplying these vectors together, it's a dot product. The answer is a scalar. That's why sometimes it's called the scalar product. So the result of a dot product is always a number, it's not a vector. Now if I was going to find the dot product of these two, well then it's just 1 times 6, negative 7 times 4, I get negative 22. So how do we play with it? If I was to find the dot product of lambda u with v, I've got a choice. Because it's a scalar, it actually doesn't matter when I do the multiplication. So I could do the dot product of u and v first and then multiply that by lambda. Or if I prefer, I'll multiply u by lambda and then do the dot product. Doesn't matter. Do it either way. Now here's where we've got to be careful. It looks like, it looks like expanding parentheses, but we're not actually expanding parentheses. It's not multiplication, it's the dot product. So when we write this, the answer is not au, because that would imply I'm getting the vector a and multiplying it by the vector u, which is a different thing. This is a dot u. So the dot is very important, because a dot u will be a number. Whereas if I multiply the vector a with the vector u, the answer is actually a vector. And so there is a difference between the two, and we'll look at multiplying vectors together later. So when I expand, for want of a better word, this out, I'll get a dot u plus a dot v. So again, you could do it in two ways. You could, if you preferred, just add these two vectors together first and then find the dot product. The order, again, not important. Okay, same as when we multiply, 3 times 2 is the same as 2 times 3, it's true with vectors as well. Now here's a good one, if you find the dot product of a vector with itself, well you're going to get the x value and multiply it with the x value, so I'll get x1 squared, and then I'm going to get the y value and multiply it with the y value, so I'll get y1 squared. Well hang on a sec, that's our distance. Well not quite our distance, because normally we'd see the square root of that. So it's our distance squared, so it's the magnitude squared. So if you are going to find the dot product of a vector with itself, it's just the magnitude of that vector squared. Now let's have a look at this. It looks like the difference of two squares, but it's not, because it's a dot product, we're not doing multiplication. So the actual expansion is u dot u minus v dot v. We don't get the vector u squared. Remember, it's not multiplication, it's the dot product. But look what happens. We get u dot u, which is the magnitude of u squared, minus the magnitude of v squared. So it sort of is the difference of two squares, but it's not the vector squared, it's its magnitude squared when we do this out. Let's have a look at this. So here is a little triangle of vectors I've drawn up. Uh, we'll call this one v, this one's u. The red one, head minus tail must be u minus v. If I wanted to work out this angle here, well I could do it via the cosine rule. It's still a triangle, so I could do that, but it would be the magnitudes, because the length of the vectors we're talking about. So I know the magnitude of u minus v squared is the magnitude of u squared plus the magnitude of v squared minus 2 times the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times the cosine of theta. Now I could work all that out because they're all going to be different scalars. The first one, well we're really saying what's the distance between u and v, so it'll be x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. Didn't have to worry about the square root because I'm squaring. x1 squared plus x2 squared plus y1 squared plus y2 squared minus 2 times, I've left those as the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v. We'll see why in a second. Because what we end up with is this, if I play around with it. Well hang on, there's also a common factor there of negative 2 I could get rid of. Eventually I'll get rid of that magnitude of 2. Why did I just get rid of the minuses? That's weird. But anyway, we've got the x1, x2 and the y1, y2, which we know is u dot v. Uh, I've got two lots of u dot v equals two lots of the magnitude of u, magnitude of v, cosine theta. Hang on, here's another way of finding the dot product. If we know the magnitude of u and we know the magnitude of v and we know the size of this angle, I could get the, the dot product. But what that also means is I could get the angle by making cos theta the subject of that. 
So all right, if they're my two vectors, then what I know is that. The dot product, there's two ways I could work it out. x1, x2 plus y1, y2. Or I could work it out by saying magnitude of u times the magnitude of v cosine of theta. But notice this. The beautiful thing about this is I know theta is either acute or obtuse. It's an angle in a triangle. And the nice thing about cosine, there's no question which one it is. If it's positive, I've got to get an acute angle. And if it's negative, I've got to get an obtuse angle. So there's no confusion. So I now want to find the angle between these two vectors. Remember, we said we could do it this way. If I make cos theta the subject, look at this beautiful little formula. It's so easy to remember because it's a dot b over the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. It all matches. There's a, b, a, b. Okay? Sub in. A dot b would be 3 times 4 minus 2 times 1. The bottom then is the distances of those vectors or the, the magnitude of those vectors. Root 13, root 17. Play around with it, we get 48 degrees. We know it's 48 degrees roughly. So to the nearest degree. So some consequences. What can we use the dot product? What information can it tell us? If I know u dot v is equal to zero, I know those vectors have got to be perpendicular to each other. Because if it's equal to zero, then cos theta must have been zero. Well, if cos theta is zero, what's theta? 90 degrees. That therefore means, remember we set up the unit vectors i and j, they're perpendicular to each other? Then i dot j, which also would be the same as j dot i, must always be zero. Now, if u dot v actually turns out to be magnitude of u times the magnitude of v, I don't care about the sign, then they must be parallel to each other. Because what is that telling me? That's telling me cos theta must have been either plus or minus 1. Now, if it was plus 1, then the angle must have been 0. So the angle between the two vectors is 0. They're going in the same direction. They've got to be parallel. If the angle between the two vectors was negative 1, then theta was 180. They're going in opposite directions. Either way, they're parallel. That's what I'm saying here. If it turned out that u, uh, the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v, if that was the positive one, then we know they're going in the same direction. If it turns out they're the negative, it's the negative one, then they're going in opposite directions. And the unit vectors, well, i dot i, magnitude squared, but the magnitude of the unit vector is 1, and 1 squared is 1, so i dot i and j dot j must be 1. Okay, let's have a look at an HSC one from a couple of years ago. So question 11D, what did they get us to do? Well, simply they just gave us these two vectors and told us they're perpendicular. What could A be? It's all right, they're just testing us to see whether we know that perpendicular vectors, when we get the dot product, it's equal to zero. Let's go and solve this. Multiply the x values together, I get a squared minus 7a. Y values together, I get 8a minus 2. I've got a quadratic to solve. Two possibilities. A might have been negative 2, might have been 1. All right. Adult choice for today.